It's nice to have you with us today. Let's see if we can get our volume up and running. There we go. Uh, a couple of announcements before we begin our service. Uh, the first of which is we are in Advent, which means that we have services at noon and at 7 o'clock each Wednesday. Uh, we have the noon service with our elementary students here with us, and it is set up precisely for those of you who have a lunch hour. This first Wednesday, uh, Vicar preached uh, the children's message at noon, and the total of the service was 23 minutes long. So if you're looking for a worship service that fits well within a half hour, Wednesday, 7 o'clock and in the evening, and then noon and in the, the midday. So we'd like to encourage you to be part of that. We'd also like to encourage you to uh, begin now this festive season as our uh, programs and specials begin to happen. And this coming Saturday at four o'clock, there will be a Christmas concert here in the congregation with some of our instrumentalists and our organists. And that will be at four this coming Saturday. And then we will have the service that will normally start at five. So 4 o'clock is the first uh, concert, and then 5 o'clock we will start the service for this coming weekend. And it looks like we may have three baptisms this weekend, possibly, so we keep that in our prayers. Uh, also, would like you to pull up your hymnal, and I'd like you in your hymnal to turn to hymn number 690. I chose us to sing around the sermon hymn 690. The tune is awkward. We've never sung it before. So I changed tunes on it, and according to the melody meter, it should have worked. It didn't work last night. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Hick Young to play just right-hand melody 690. And if you have that hymn in front of you, and those of you who know how to follow notes can do that, we're going to sing it through twice. The first time we're going to sing just the right hand melody, simple. And then the second time through, I'm going to have her put both hands on it and we'll see what we can do with this. This may be a struggle for you because this isn't a really easy hymn. And I apologize for it, but we don't have any other tunes that seem to work. So, Let's try this. Hick Young, one time, just right hand. And it is the best tune we have to work with. But the text is wonderful. So I apologize in ahead, ahead of time for the challenge that that particular hymn will be for us. But hopefully the others will be in our sweet spots. We have a couple of announcements regarding prayers. You have that 4x4 four four card in front of you that says, invite you to worship on the back side. Ask you to fill in the details. Would you fill in those details? And then at the bottom, if you have any of the prayer requests, write them in there and drop them in the collection plate after the service. Uh, the prayers that we are going to be praying for and about are those who have baptismal birthdays, and you'll see them listed there, as well as uh, the Advent series that we're doing each Wednesday, noon, and 7 o'clock. 
Uh, we are collecting uh, diapers, I understand, uh, for the uh, mission of the month. So if you could buy a box of diapers and bring them in, we'd appreciate that. And then uh, for healing, those that we're aware of that are in need of God's merciful hand, pray for them. And then those that we know are anticipating the birth of children, uh, that's the last category. If you have other prayers, put them on the bottom of that card, put them in the collection plate at the end of the service. Also want to share with you what I shared with the congregation yesterday. Uh, this has been a, bit, a very interesting week for an aging facility. Uh, if you look at those two doors that have the word exit over there adjacent to our uh, handicap parking, them broke. And that fix is about $16,000. We didn't budget for that, so keep that in your prayers. Uh, we have been struggling with the uh, fire, um, I, uh, fire not suppression, but the, the fire, uh, um, what's the word I want to use? Detection system in the congregation. Uh, and we have spent tens of thousands of dollars already repairing it. The uh, parts no longer exist. And the repairs are probably in the $300,000 range to get everything repaired on the system. And we had a fire inspection this last week, and guess what we did? Failed it. So we are up against some significant costs in trying to get the, the fire detection system in this congregation up and running. And since we have about 500 kids running around here during the week, it's pretty important we address it. So please keep uh, those sort of things in our prayers because uh, like in our own family finances, there are things that we never anticipate, and yet life happens. And uh, it happens in the congregation as well in an aging facility. So please keep those things in your prayers. The board of directors will be meeting on Tuesday to scratch their head and go, what does this mean and what do we do this? So your prayers are greatly appreciated at this point. In addition to those, I believe uh, we've covered everything that vicar and pastors say we have. So with that, please rise and let's continue our service. We begin our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ to be gracious and merciful to me. Merciful to me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first reading for today is from Isaiah, the 11th chapter. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with, with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decision for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie, lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together. A little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will, will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand onto, into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today comes from Romans chapter 15. Paul writes, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises to him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. 
The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please rise. Gospel, Matthew, the third chapter, beginning with the first verse. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, the kingdom of God is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Don't think you can say to yourselves, well, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the tree. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. After me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor gathering his wheat into the barn, and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Okay, be seated. If you need your hymnals, it's 690. Let's give it our best shot.
my mouth and may the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good job. How many E's are there in the word Advent? And of course, asking the question, no, it has to be a trick. Because as you look at the word Advent, your first blush answer would be one. But in reading the epistle for today, there are actually three E's this Advent in the word Advent. Paul uses two of them just as they are. There is the E of endurance, the E of encouragement, and then the third E that Paul calls hope. Today, the synonym E, expectation. Three E's in this Advent meditation. Endurance, encouragement, expectation, endurance. Of all the scripture, what verse epitomizes for you endurance? Paul begins the text for today saying, for everything was written, and he's talking about Scripture. Everything is written in the past. It was written to teach us that through, there's the word, endurance, we might have hope. So as you rifle through Scripture, what is the story that for you epitomizes endurance? The ones I thought of begin, of course, with Job. Most of that book is about endurance. Then there is the story of Jonah and God's enduring will for the people of Nineveh and Jonah's resistance of that will. There's the story of Esther in the middle of a culture that found itself at odds with her people. And she in the unique position of advocating for those people. There's a story of Ruth. And how her life seemed to fall apart before her very eyes. And as that story unfolds, finally she finds in the field true love and redemption. Job, Jonah, Esther, Ruth, they're stories of endurance. But as you flip into the New Testament, there is the story of the first martyr of Christendom, Stephen. In the face of overt persecution, his willingness to take his stand and confess Jesus as his Lord and Savior, even at the risk of death, and it caused him his death. And there is so much documented in the New Testament about Paul's endurance in the face of all kinds of persecution and his conviction to lift high the cross of Christ. But when you think of the word endurance, is it Job or Jonah or Esther? Is it Ruth or Stephen or Paul that comes to mind? Or an entirely different story? Because you see, Scripture is recorded so that by reading and inwardly digesting it, we might have endurance. Some of the stories on endurance are there to warn us, to navigate through certain behaviors, and to keep our eyes fixed upon the glory of our God in the person of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of those stories of endurances are to remind us, are to rewarn us, not to repeat the errors of those who have gone before us, and to tell us in the face of our own hardships in life that it produces out of endurance a harvest of righteousness for those who believe. 
that even in moments of challenge and struggle in our life, God is turning it inside out and backwards, and that through this endurance, we will have a peace. When you think of endurance, and you're thinking of the scriptures you've read, what story do you think of? And how does it encourage you to run the race set before you despite the opposition and the struggles? There is so much today that demands us as Christians to employ patient endurance and faithfulness as we live our life in a manner that's worthy of of the gospel. You see, everything written in Scripture was to inspire and instill within us endurance so that we could run the race before us. To endure. The child of God must hear and inwardly digest the living and enduring Word of God. Paul says, That's why it's printed on the page for you. So that as you contend with the elements of this world, you might have endurance. The biblical stories of endurance are not just there to warn us. They're there as examples that poor, sinful human beings like us can take their stand against the devil, all of his works and all of his ways. They are examples of how the faithful before us have stood the test and faced the challenge and ran the race. Paul's whole life story is an example for all of us to put our trust in him, not ourselves, but in him who alone has the power to raise us from the dead. Timothy's ministry was a ministry of example to the believers in that context to endure everything for the sake of the gospel. You see, what's written in the scriptures is written to give us the encouragement to endure and by endurance. We commend ourselves to all who are watching in the face of things, and Paul has quite a list here, trouble, hardship, distress, hard work, sleepless nights, he writes, hunger, having sometimes the perception we have nothing, and yet possessing everything. What is written in Scripture is to encourage us to endure. Examples of endurance. Warnings of encouragement. To inspire within us. To witness to the truth that what is ours is obtained through the gift of God in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Scripture calls us to put out that example of encouragement. So it will cause the world to ask the question, how can you do that? And the answer out of our mouths is the name that is above every other name. A witness to Jesus Christ. What is written is written to inspire us to endure. But it's also written to encourage us in every aspect of our life. Paul goes back to the words, for everything that was written in the past, and he's talking about Scripture, was written to teach us so that through encouragement we might have hope. Of all the stories in the Bible, which story for you epitomizes encouragement? Every time you read it, it lifts you up as on eagle's wings and reminds you that you are in the loving arms of your Savior. 
What text encourages you most? Would it be David in the face of his giant? Would it be Elijah, fearful for his life? And God's reminder that there are thousands that he has reserved that have not bowed a knee to Baal. Elijah, get back to the job. Would it be Zacchaeus hanging up on that limb in the tree and hearing the words of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ come down? i got to go spend some time in your home today. Would it be Mary? In the face of her grief, outside that tomb, they heard the words, Mary, Mary, why do you seek the living among the dead? Or would it be Peter's story? In the face of his own personal disappointment, shame, and guilt having betrayed his best friend, And now hearing his friend says, do you love me? Feed my sheep. What story in scripture encourages you? Was it one of those or another that you thought of? You see, those stories written for us, those stories of encouragement are there to give us counsel in the face of discouragement in our life because The experiences that we're having, whatever they are, Paul says are pretty routine. In his words, they're common to man. But they're specific to our experience. And related to our experience, the encouragement in the face of whatever you're struggling with is that God is faithful. He knows the edges of your plate. And he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He is right there with you. Encouragement. You see, our God is the Lord of eternal encouragement, Scripture says. And in that encouragement, our hearts are strengthened And we are inspired to do that every good work that he has preordained for us in advance. Everything that's written in Scripture is there to urge us to endure, to encourage us to run the race to his own. He offers to us this promise of encouragement. At least for me, I find these words always to be encouraging. Never, never will I leave you. Never, ever will I forsake you. Surely, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Advent. With the three E's, is a season of got them, endurance, encouragement, and expectation, which is a synonym for hope. The stories of encouragement are embedded in Scripture to provide us support. Encouragement is a spiritual gift. Granted by the Holy Spirit that Paul urges Christians to exercise liberally in our life. Think of someone. Maybe in your household. Maybe just a door outside your property. Maybe a member of your extended family. Maybe a friend at school or at work. That needs you to exercise liberally the gift of encouragement this week, who needs to receive from you a card or a letter or a phone call or just a word to lift them up in the face of what they are contending with. Encouragement. 
It's a spiritual gift that we are encouraged to exercise liberally in the lives of those around us. What is written in Scripture is to urge us to endure and to be encouraged to be encouragers. When believers speak, what comes out of our mouth should be for the strengthening and for the encouragement and for the comfort of those who have ears to hear and hearts to believe and lives that will reflect that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Three words in E for Advent. You got them now. Endurance, encouragement, and the third one, an E word for hope is expectation. For everything was written, Paul writes, in the past, it was written to teach us through endurance, through encouragement, we might have hope. Of all the stories in the Bible, which story epitomizes expectation for you? For me, it's the baby Jesus in the hands of mom and dad. And that elderly man in the temple courts, you know his name? That was told by the Lord that he would not die until he'd seen with his own eyes the salvation of his people. Do you remember the words he spoke as he took Jesus into his arms? Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. I can die, for my eyes have seen your salvation which is intended for all people, a light for the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. Boy, when I think of expectation, I think of that experience. I think of that night that the shepherds walked into into Bethlehem in eager anticipation. I think of the wise men who came looking for the child. And I think of Jesus. When I think of expectation. And when I think of expectation. It is hope. That resonates in my heart. Hope. The Lord makes it possible. For us to run. And not grow weary. To walk and not become faint. Faint. This thing, this expectation, this eager expectation is an anchor for our soul. And it never, Paul writes, it never, ever disappoints. Endurance. Encouragement. Expectation. When everything else around us fails... When everyone around us disappoints, when what we expected to be here today just disappears before our very eyes, hope, faith, and love remain. Our hope, good Christian friends, this Advent, my hope this Advent, is the end, finally the ultimate end to harm and destruction, and death. My hope, I hope your hope, this Advent season, is that the whole world will be filled with God's glory. My hope is that the nations this season would rally at the foot of the cross. And my hope is in the appearing of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in glory with his angels and his archangels. My hope this Advent season is for eternal life in him who gave his life for me, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith until life everlasting. Amen.
I invite you to please rise as we confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made. For us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, all the blessings in this world you have given us and they have come from you. Father, I pray that you encourage us and lead us by your spirit to be good stewards of the gifts that you have given. And as we give our gifts back to you today, Lord, we pray that you may use them for your kingdom work in this world, that your name may be glorified, that all peoples may be gathered under the cross, professing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you've gathered all of us into your kingdom. And the way you do that is through the gift of baptism, where you wash us clean at the font. And today we lift up those who are remembering and celebrating the day when you washed them clean. And today we especially lift up Stuart and Sarah, Ricky, Judd, Janice, Dave, Alyssa, Kelly, Bailey, Larry, Chuck, Gil, Alex, and Jonathan. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with them and that you lead and guide them by your spirit, that today, that they may continue to live as washed and clean and, and baptized children of you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season of Advent, where we remember your first coming into the world as that little baby born for us in Bethlehem. But as we also prepare our hearts and minds for your second coming, when you're going to come and gather all of those who call on you, you're going to gather everyone of all nations, of all people, all who call on you and trust in you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, today as we continue to be encouraged by your word, we ask that you give us endurance as we continue to wait. Wait in expectation. Wait in hope that one day you will come. You will come to bring an end to all pain, to all death, and to all suffering. Lord, in your mercy. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mission of the month, this month, the baby shower for Jesus as we collect diapers for those in need. Be with those families with young children. And we pray that they may have their needs met through this baby shower, Lord. And we ask that they may lead their young children, their young families, they may lead them to the font where you can wash them clean and where you invite them to be a part of your family, your kingdom, which has no end. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, today we have many people on our hearts and minds in need of your healing. And today we especially lift up Ilsa and Jeff, Donna, Dave, and Jack. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with them and work with the doctors and nurses that are working with them. We pray that through those doctors and nurses that they may receive that healing, Lord, the healing that comes from you. And in this difficult time, we ask that you may allow them to continue to look to you and continue to trust in you, continue to hope in you, even in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you are with us in the difficult times of life, and you are also with us in the joyful times as well. And today we ask that you be with all of those parents who are expecting a new son or daughter soon. Be with Alex and Will, and Brad and Kelsey, Stephen and Sarah, and Matt and Andrea. Lord, continue to be with them as they continue to wait in expectation. Be with all the moms and all the sons or or daughters during this pregnancy that they may continue to have good health. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to watch over those babies-to-be until they are brought to the font and washed and made your children in your kingdom. Lord, we ask all of this in your son's holy and precious name, and we now pray the prayer together that your son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times In all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient to death, even death upon a cross, and risen from the dead, he's freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is a cup in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink of this often in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. And now that you see the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may it strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in our Savior's peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.